Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of my tutorial park. Now uh, in the first episode of this series, I showed you how to generate a map. This map is also randomly generated. Uh, in the second episode, uh, I built this uh, little entrance area of the park. Here you can see the ticket counters. And here you can see some toilets and the uh, place where the guests will, or these uh, entertainers will uh, check the tickets of the guests. Well, you'll have to pretend that they do. And in this episode, I want to focus on the actual plaza that I'm going to build after the entrance. And in this plaza, well, there's uh, many ways that you can uh, build uh, one of these. Some parks uh, just sort of have like a, like a main street that leads to the center of the park. And from there, uh, the park branches out everywhere. Some parks just immediately branch out right after the entrance. Um, yeah, some parks uh, will have uh, like a round square over here, uh, maybe with a fountain. There's just a lot of uh, different things you uh, will find at different parks. Every park is uh, different. Uh, for this park, uh, I think I will just make a small plaza over here from which we will already immediately uh, branch out. But something which I uh, do want to have in this area is some shops and some stalls. Because that's uh, something you will typically find at the theme parks. Now, uh, some things that I definitely want to have over here is uh, maybe some toilets, so the guests don't have to actually leave the the park to get to the toilets, so they can go to the toilets over here. Uh, we'll probably want to have uh, a stall where guests can get a park map right after the entrance. So I'll uh, hide some uh, information kiosks over here inside the building. And um, yeah, I think I also want to have a souvenir shop. That's also uh, something you will probably find uh, near the entrance of the park, most uh, most likely. So when guests exit the park, um, they, yeah, it will be uh, good if they see a souvenir stall uh, uh, right before they leave. And uh, yeah, we can probably have some restaurants uh, and some places for the guests to buy some food. Anyway, um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, work on the, uh, an information kiosk over here. I'm just going to widen this a little bit. Maybe we'll uh, make a fountain here in the middle uh, later. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I'm right over here, right next to the entrance, I'm going to make a stall uh, where I'm going to uh, put some information kiosks. So I'll start by uh, building an information kiosk over here. No, I don't want it to actually connect to this path here, so I will just temporarily put a wall here, just so it doesn't connect to this path. I want to hide this information kiosk in a, uh, yeah, in sort of like a stall here, so then it'll look silly, I think, if it also connects over here. But uh, if in your situation you want it to connect, uh, then you should could build it uh, without without this wall. Now, um. Instead of building two information kiosks, I uh, like to just copy a building and place a copy of it right next to it. But that really depends on the layout of your stalls. So uh, yeah, with the tile inspector you can just copy and paste a stall if you want. And then it uh, is still considered the same ride. So uh, in tile inspector I will just select this uh, track piece, information kiosk. I will copy it. And then I will paste it here. And you can see we have a second information kiosk, but it's still the same ride. So I can change the color of the umbrellas and I only have to do it for one of them. I still have to connect the path though, because it doesn't do that automatically when you copy and paste uh, a stall. Okay, now I will uh, delete this wall again. As you can see, the path is not connected here. Okay. Um, when I make a stall or a building, um, well, I often just see people uh, take uh, these walls, especially beginner uh, people. Let's uh, quickly disable the clearance checks, just so we can build uh, closer. No. What I often see people do is just uh, make something like this, so... Uh, yeah, just the roof like this, and this is then the building. Now, um, this is, uh, of course, not very interesting. I will quickly make this uh, stall invisible. You can do that by selecting the track piece, the information kiosk, and then pressing this eye icon. Now it's invisible. 
But yeah, a building like this is just not very interesting to uh, to look at. It's quite uh, bland. It's not very, uh, yeah, it just doesn't look very nice. So, um, how do we make our building look nicer? Um, let me just delete these walls again. Just remember these uh, information kiosks are in here. As long as this path here is connected, people will be able to access them. Now, if you want to make your uh, shops, building stalls look nice, uh, I always recommend uh, trying to mix some uh, materials. For example, uh, you could uh, take this wall over here. Or actually, uh, we could take, for example, this uh, this small brick wall, or any wall really. You could even go for a uh, for a wooden uh, wall like this. And yeah, I will just take this brick wall since we've since we're already using it here. And I will just uh, put some of these. I'll put these on the outside tile. So you can see um, I can place a wall here, but I can also place it over here. This is on the outside of the tile, this is on the inside. So when you're going to place walls on the same, uh, if you want to place them on the same spot, then uh, yeah, you should be wary of that you can place on the outside and the inside. So I'll just place these on the outside like this. And let's find a nice wall to go with it. Um, I'll just go with this one, very basic one. And I'll take this uh, beige color. And I'll place these walls here on the inside. And now we'll need some sort of roof as well. Um, let's see what we can go with. We could probably just go with something like this. Now we... Uh, I usually like to build some sort of counter when I make a stall like this. The information kiosk is here on the inside. So uh, let's see, what can we make a counter with? I'll just go with this low wall over here. Something like that. Now the path here is still connected, so guests can still access this uh, information kiosk that's uh, that's inside here. Now I also put a uh, Put a sign here because that's something we can do now with this uh, roof over here all right now this says uh, park info now um, i will just lower the ground under this uh, stall and make sure to check that disable clearance checks is uh, is on or else when you uh, lower or raise the land right under here some of the walls will disappear so if disable clearance checks is on, then you can just uh, build uh, whatever. And now I'll just put some uh, base blocks under here. Uh, probably it looks better than grass, since we can look inside of this building. Now usually a safe, uh, uh, yeah, a safe thing to place under the or inside your stalls. It's like a checkerboard, especially if it's a stall where uh, yeah, something is being. Uh, Food is being prepared, then you'll make it sort of look like a kitchen, or you could go with uh, with a wooden uh, floor, something like that. You can choose a nice color if you want, maybe green. Um, you could also uh, use a pole, for example. Let's uh, do, some, do something like this. By the way, um, if I mouse over this wall, for example, and if I then hold control. Then uh, that allows you to uh, place some other objects at the same height. So if I want to place something at the same height as this roof, or as this roof, for example, I uh, mouse, hold my mouse over it, I press and hold control. Now it lets me build at the same height as this uh, roof anywhere. So I also use that here to uh, build over this floor that I just lowered. Right now you uh, may be wondering why I built this uh, stall like this and there's something really cool you can do in this game uh, so I'll just make a little path like this now something which I downloaded is the peep editor plugin you can get it at openrct2plugins.org so uh, I will take two entertainers now I'll just go with sheriff entertainers I think they uh, are the most fun to work with and let's go into the peep editor all right and now with the peep editor with this uh, I, with this tool i selected one of the entertainers now i'll just uh, press this button then you can freeze them in place 
And then with these buttons, with X and Y position, you can then move the entertainer to where you want him to be. So I'll just uh, move him here in front of this counter. And now it looks like uh, he's actually uh, attending this shop. So I'll do the same for this uh, entertainer. By doing this, you can also um, freeze them while they're doing a pose. For example, now he uh, is holding his head up. That's also uh, fun to do in some uh, situations. All right, now we have a fun little park info uh, booth here. Now, uh, be careful with these paths. Uh, I believe if you uh, build another path over these ones, then these paths might disconnect. So uh, be uh, be aware of that. If one of these paths uh, disconnects for some reason, so for example, now it's disconnected, then with the tile inspector, if you select this path, you can just do like this, and now it's connected again. So uh, if you select the path here, you can see all the connected edges and that determines uh, which sides of the path are actually connected to something else. Now, um, something which you can also do to make a building look even more inviting. Um, here we have this uh, canvas roof. And uh, let's see if we can fit one of these inside here. All right. So it's a subtle effect, but uh, yeah, I think this uh, makes it look a little bit more festive. It looks like there's some decoration here inside of this uh, building. All right, uh, I think that's uh, pretty nice. Uh, I will also just make a small toilet building over here. Now, it will not be anything too fancy. I think I'll just make a two by two toilet building here. I'll just place uh, some toilet stalls uh, inside here. And once again, uh, I will just uh, copy and paste uh, a toilet. I think I did the same over here for these toilets over here. Now, um, I want the, let's see, I want the path to connect on uh, these two tiles. Over here, I'll already place a wall so the path doesn't connect there. And then I'll do like this, and now the path only connects where I want it to connect. I think this path will actually look nice inside the building. We probably won't see too much uh, of the inside of the building, but I think it will be uh, nice. All right, for uh, this building, I'll go for the same color as uh, the Spark Info uh, stall over here. So I'll go with the new beige color. Now, um, I don't want this to just be open. I think buildings uh, usually look nicer when they have a door. So I'll just take this doorway over here. And we'll just place a door like this. Actually, you can now also use the invisible color if you like that. Nick, then uh, you use the invisible color for the doorway. Then, uh, yeah, it will just look like there's no door here. That, uh, that also uh, might look pretty nice. And just like for this building, um, yeah, there's now a wall in between these paths, but the path is still connected since we place this wall later with uh, cleaners check disabled so now our guests will just treat it as if there is no wall over here now, uh, i will just quickly finish this building there's no other windows uh, in this building you could make windows um, usually not really necessary in uh, toilet buildings i think i'm right, just going to make an extra rim of decoration around here and I'll do, then just place some uh, simple, just a simple little roof on top. Now, um, I often see people uh, use, let's see, these roofs for their, uh, for their buildings. It's also an option, but I don't think uh, this will make your buildings look as nice as, uh, let's see, as these roofs, for example. I think uh, this uh, just gives building a, buildings a little bit more character if there's a, a facade they're looking at. In general, I think uh, this will uh, make your buildings look nicer than when you use this uh, yeah, this really pointy roof, which uh, then uh, turns pointy in the middle. But that's just uh, my uh, humble opinion.
All right, um, I think in the middle, I'm just going to make a, a simple fountain here. I haven't really thought this out, but uh, I'll just uh, quickly make something. All right, just made a simple fountain here in the middle with this geometric, uh, with this Roman fountain. There's some waterfalls here on the side. Um, and here in the water, I just put some walls, uh, put them a little bit into the water. But I think that makes for a nice uh, small wall around the fountain. And let's see, we can probably also fit some uh, benches over here. Maybe a lamp or two, like this, like so. I think that already really brightens up uh, the area. I always as I, uh, tell people not to overdo it with benches and uh, litter bins. Just uh, It's always good to place a few, I think, but uh, don't uh, try not to overdo it. Unless you're playing a scenario, uh, maybe. Anyway, um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, just build a little souvenir shop here. Now, um, I think I might just make it another 2x2 two two building, or maybe 3x3. Three three. And inside the shop I will just place uh, probably a t-shirt stall and a souvenir stall. Now, when you... Uh, make buildings in a park it's always a good idea to try and make them look inviting and one uh, way to make your buildings look inviting is by using an awning or an overhang over the path so uh, here you can see i make the make this path um yeah i made this building uh, this shape like three by three and with these poles uh, you can easily make an overhang so make sure the path is already placed uh, when you uh, Place these posts first and then place the path later. Well, the post actually behaves like a path. So I can show you here if this post is already here. Then I try to place a path later. You can see the paths don't connect to each other here. So best to place the path first and make sure this Hebel Cleaners checks is uh, enabled. And then place the posts and then you can just place them uh, anywhere. All right, you can see I placed these paths here now. Now, um, when you make a wall like this, it will usually look nice um, if you also put something here on the end to uh, finish off the wall. So, uh, and a post can also work uh, beautifully for that. So, I will just place a post here and one over here. And that will just uh, make this wall look more uh, finished and will make it look less uh, thin. Actually, let's give them a splash of color. Right here in this uh, little overhang or awning, I will use the same trick that I used in the park info booth. That's that I will uh, just put some of these canvas roofs under it. This is a little trick that I uh, like to use to make it look a little bit more festive. Now um, I will uh, need to finish off this building with a roof. Now there's uh, a million different ways you can make a roof. I think uh, for here uh, I will just go with a flat roof. But uh, you can do uh, anything you want here. Once again, uh, you could also go with a pointy roof uh, like this, what I often see people do. But uh, once again, I don't uh, really like how that looks compared to uh, yeah, a more uh, traditional roof with, uh, with one part facing uh, in front. So this is what I often see people do. It's definitely a viable way of making a roof, but um, there is a nicer way, I think. I think this is a much nicer way to do a roof, but uh, since this roof has so much area, I think I will just go for a flat roof. And for a flat roof, you can just use uh, black base blocks. At least that's how uh, real 
theme parks usually make their uh, roofs. So quite often in real theme parks you will see that the front of a building actually has a nice looking facade, but the top of the roof is typically just uh, flat and uh, black. For example in the Dutch theme park Efteling, if you know the ride Vliegende Hollander, you know it's uh, the, fr the front of the building actually looks beautiful with all these old houses and stuff. But then on Google Maps, when you look at the right and uh, you see the top of the building, you will see it's just uh, completely black. Because the, the guests won't be uh, able to see that part anyway. So there's no point in actually decorating uh, that part. All right, when you have a flat roof, there's uh, actually many ways you can still decorate it. Well, first off, I'm going to put a little sign on the building. So that guests know that they can build that they can buy souvenirs here. Now, and when you have a black flat roof like this, well, now I added some steel fences. Not really know uh, that is necessary, but um, for example, for this uh, flat black roof, you could add some uh, some other pieces. And that's just to make it look a little bit more uh, random. Actually, not really sure if I like those uh, those pieces. But yeah, especially when your roofs uh, become very big, then it's always a good idea to also put some other pieces in between, just to uh, break up that uh, yeah that uh, uniformity. Something which will also look really nice is. Uh, for example, if you take one of these paths, so uh, this ash path, or at least with one of these uh, supports, with a tile inspector, I will just select this footpath, I will raise it up a little bit, we'll copy it, and then I'll paste it here. I also often see people uh, use this for their, uh, for their roofs. And there's something else which you can uh, use for the roofs. Um, that's the New York roof piece. That's the one that I uh, like to use a lot for uh, for roofs. I think this is a great texture to use on uh, on flat roofs. I think I like it uh, even better than this uh, black uh, base block. All right, now we have uh, built some toilets, park info booth. And we've built a souvenir stall, also with a nice overhang here, so it looks uh, inviting for the guests. And I think that's uh, that's a really good thing. Now I think I will branch the path off over here, and I'll probably do the same on this side, and then I'll add. Uh, I think I'll add a little restaurant over here. Now, when I make a restaurant, I always also like to have some uh, seating areas in there for the guests. So to do that, uh, I will just place some walls like uh, over here, maybe also over here. So I just try to make some uh, dead ends in here. And typically only guests who are wandering around with food will walk into dead ends. So now uh, we have these placed and then I'll just put some benches in there like that and something which I also like to place is uh, from the pagoda set uh, these uh, lily pad uh, these lily pads they kind of look like tables so I will just place them down right here on the path and then uh, when the guests sit down here to eat it will actually look like they uh, have a little table in front of them now, it does look a little bit glitchy here for some reason, but uh, yeah, it will be uh, more difficult to see later anyway. Now, since this, uh, this is a restaurant, uh, we probably also want the guests to be able to actually uh, look outside when they're eating. It also really depends a bit on uh, if you want there to be a view on, uh, on each side. But for a restaurant, uh, yeah, you typically want a guest to actually be... Uh, or. Yeah, you want it to look a little bit more inviting than, uh, for example, a souvenir shop. Well, a souvenir shop, um, this one looks just looks inviting on the front side. But uh, I think in a real souvenir shop, you 
we'll generally see uh, that all the walls are actually used for shelf space. So to put stuff for guests to buy instead of uh, for windows. Anyway, um, yeah, for uh, windows, for, we, there's uh, a lot of choices. Uh, newer players, I often just see uh, y use this one a lot. It's a, it's a viable option, but uh, there's many more uh, you can use. For example, uh, these uh, castle walls, they will typically also work pretty well. Maybe we place it a bit higher, like so. You could also go for glass walls. Now, actually, I will make this wall a little bit lower. Then it's easier to make some uh, nice looking windows around it. Now for glass walls, um, what I like to do is use these uh, lower glass walls. I often see people just uh, make big lattices like this. That's also an option, of course. And in some situations, I will also use that. For smaller buildings, um, I like to use uh, these smaller walls. And I will just stack them on top. And you could, for example... Um, Put some of these poles here in front. That will give you a really nice uh, pattern to use. Alright, and now for building. But uh, I forgot to actually place the stalls inside for guests to actually buy some food um i think we can just make this a, a burger place all right looks like the path is connected so that's good and let's also make a, a stall here for the guests to buy some drinks now they actually show through the roof now typically um if you want um if you want the stall to not be visible through other scenery that's on the same uh, spot. If you move the stall to the top, then usually um, it will uh, no longer be visible through other scenery like this. But then later if we place something above it, then it might uh, become visible again. Yeah, you can see it now it becomes visible again. But yeah, um, if that uh, doesn't help and it's still visible through the other stuff you place on the same tile, you can always just make it invisible. But I like to do it like this. Uh, so I just move it on top above all the other stuff in the on this tile. And then uh, if you do that, then if you, for example, hide the scenery, you can still see that there's these uh, stalls inside here. Just a minor thing. Now, another minor thing that we have here is that... Uh, well, we have these paths here, but there's still grass next to them. So if you don't like that, um, I recommend just uh, putting a different um, path type under here. So now it's no longer uh, apparent. But what's probably even better is to uh, just lower the floor under the path here and then uh, put some tiles under it. For example, you could make a wooden floor in here. But yeah, that's uh, that's really uh, up to you. All right, uh, I think that's enough buildings for now. I think in the next episode we can actually start building some rides here. I think it will be nice to already start with a little shoestring ride, because that's something uh, which I get a lot of questions about. Uh, yeah, when you do it, when you do them a few times, it's actually quite easy to make them. So I think uh, that'll be a nice thing to uh, start with in the next episode. All right, I think it's now uh, nice to name these entertainers after some of my patrons. All right, Dan Pro and Jess Anden, uh, you guys are now um, the people in my park who are handing out the park maps to guests. And I guess also umbrellas. 
yeah, um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, tutorial park episode. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two today. Stuff that you can also use uh, in a park that you are building. And uh, yeah, if you uh, like this part, uh, this episode, or if you learned something new today, please consider giving this video a like. It would really help out my channel. And I'll see you again in the next video. See you later.